The Bengal Swamp is a vast and brackish swampland that was created through continental collisions, 100 million AD. The continents have drifted vast distances since the Quaternary. A massive rift of land which broke away from Africa along the East African Rift has moved across what was the Indian Ocean and collided with the southernmost corner of Southeast Asia. As the two landmasses came together, a vast inland sea was created between in the area that was once the Bay of Bengal. The massive forces created by the colliding tectonic plates buckled the landmass, giving rise to a volcanic mountain range along the line of fusion. Over time, the inland sea became almost entirely cut off from the oceans to the south. Water runoff from the mountains formed rivers which washed fertile sediment into the landlocked sea. Eroded material from the newly exposed rocks was carried downwards, filling the basin and making it shallower and rich in nutrients. Gradually, the inland sea diminished, freshwater from the mountains mixed with the residual saltwater, and a vast, brackish swamp was formed. 100 million AD. The Bengal Swamp covers hundreds of thousands of square miles. Sediment carried by slow-moving channels and meandering rivers makes the water thick and impenetrable to light. Sedimentary deposits have a series of oxbow lakes and backwaters separated by muddy islands and flats. The Bengal Swamp is comparable in appearance to the Great Lowland Coal Swamps of the Carboniferous Period. The climate of the Bengal Swamp is hot. Its proximity to the equator and the shelter provided by the surrounding mountains mean that average temperatures are about over 40 degrees Celsius. Water is plentiful, running down from the mountains in an intricate network of rivers. Humidity is extremely high, averaging 99% all year round. The muds and soils are constantly replenished by nutrient-rich volcanic ash. A greenhouse environment like this is an ideal place for vegetation to grow. Plant life chokes the waterways and spreads across the lakes. Thickets of tropical plants clothe the sandbanks and deltas. Tightly spaced trees stand where any land is solid enough to hold them, spreading deep canopies of branches and leaves overhead and stabilizing the mud with their network of roots. A host of dangerous creatures dwell in the murky backwat. Urs and shallows of the Bengal Swamp beneath the tangle of thick choking vegetation. The Bengal Swamp has become so dangerous so full of large swimming predators that some other water creatures have taken refuge out of the water indeed the atmosphere of this hot swamp is so humid that many aquatic animals can spend time on land and not suffer any discomfort. In an environment such as the Bengal Swamp where vegetation flourishes the presence of large herbivores is no surprise. Once a lurk fish has struck the surrounding area of swamp seems to come to life the disturbance in the water splashing noises and electrical signal saw send out the message that danger has passed the lurk fish has hunted successfully. The lurk fish is a species of large predatory fish native to the rivers and lakes of the Bengal swamp of 100 million a descendant of the electric catfish it is notable for its ability to produce a strong electric shock with which it stuns or kills its prey. The lurk fish is a very large fish at 4 meters long its scaly skin and weed like fin spine sand barbels effectively camouflage it as a large log making it difficult to see in the murky water of the swamp it has a male of thick protective plates covering its body beneath the skin shielding its internal organs however its fins and barbels are still vulnerable to attack the lurk fish's pectoral fins carry muscular spines that bury into the mudaloing it to dig itself in. As its name implies the lurkfish's ancestor on electric catfish could also stun its prey with an electrical charge. Along each side of the lurkfish are stacks of electrical muscles blocks called electrocytes. These electrocytes are able to generate a small charge individually but when used at once they can generate a cumulative charge of over 1000 volts. The barbels of the lurkfish are also sensitive to any movement in the water. They form an electrical sensory net capable of detecting even the smallest movement of potential prey in the water nearby. The lurk fish is an ambush predator which can remain motionless in the water for several days without eating. E may equals 0.4 s, greater than it will wait for some time until prey moves within striking range before launching itself forwards and engulfing its victim in its enormous mouth it then retreats into the thick muddy water deeper in the swamp to eat in safety. Larger more dangerous prey items which could do injury to the lurk fish such as the venomous swampasare paralyzed or outright killed by the lurk fish's electric charge before they get too close. 
The lurkfish hunts a large number of aquatic swamp animals but one of its most substantial prey items is the swampusan amphibious octopus swampuses must return to the water to replenish their oxygen and to travel exposing themselves to attack from the lurkfish which is not affected by the swampuses venomous bite due to its long-range killing method. The atmosphere of this hot swamp is so humid that many aquatic animals can spend time on land and not suffer any discomfort one creature to have taken advantage of the relative safety of land is the swampus. The swampus or swampus octopus is a species of amphibious octopus native to the Bengal swamp of 100 million AD. Octopuses were already capable of performing basic tasks out of water such as hauling themselves onto dry land when the world warmed up followed the Ice Age which dominated 5 million AD. Species such as octopuses exploited the opportunities presented by a hothouse world habitats that were once restricted due to the colder climates were now open for cephalopods to explore. Now 100 million years hence the humid conditions of the Bengal swamp have allowed species such as the swampus to take refuge out of the water without suffering discomfort. The swampus has evolved to survive on land though for limited periods of time unable to breathe properly out of water it relies on finite oxygen stores in its tissues and blood once these reserves have been depleted the swampus must return to the water to replenish its oxygen supply. To further cope with the maneuverability challenges present in an amphibious lifestyle the swampus has evolved rudder-like paddles to help maneuver and support itself outside of swamp water. The humid conditions of the Bengal swamp have allowed creatures to take refuge out of water one of the advantage of transitioning to an amphibious lifestyle is raising young. Reek time equals 0.4 s greater than living in a more controlled environment allows swampus mothers to regularly monitor and provide food and amp shelter for their young inside open plants created by seasonal floods. Conquests over stretches of land are common, although they are determined by intimidation as the swampus would avoid risk of injury in such disputes. The advantages provided in a controlled environment allow swampus mothers to provide food shelter and protection for their young inside open plants known as nursery vasi seasonal floods have created open pools inside these plants an ideal environment for the swampus to raise their young swampus larvae will first acquire their lethal bite from the toxins located inside the plant once the swampus's oxygen stores become depleted it must resurface, leaving it vulnerable to predation although swampuses are protective parents even in groups adults offer little protection from the carelessness of adult toration kicking down anything in their paths. Reptiles are doing well due to the warm condition sand this tortoise descendant is the largest animal to have ever walked on earth equally at home on dry land or wading through the swamp they spend the day browsing for food as they have to consume huge amounts of vegetation. The toradon is a species of enormous tortoise native to the Bengal swamp and its surrounding grasslands in 100 million AD 7 meters tall and tipping the scales at 120 tons the toradon is among the largest terrestrial animals in history and certainly the largest animal since the age of the dinosaurs. The toradon have descended from today's tortoises the lush vegetation in the Bengal swamp provides the tortoises with many nutrients and sources of energy to properly and fully ferment and absorb the nutrients found in these food sources tortoises evolved much larger stomachs larger stomachs allowed the tortoises to evolve much larger body mass to support its enormous proportions the toradon's legs are directly underneath the animal itself as opposed to being to its sides over a course of millions of years the toradon's shell has gradually segmented given its massive Zeth toradon has no need for a shell. The toradon resembles its human era counterpart to some extent. Twos, greater than though with many prominent evolutionary changes, the toradon is significantly larger than modern tortoises and perhaps even larger than most sauropod dinosaurs. To support its immense size the toradon's legs are directly underneath the animal itself rather than to it its sides like crocodiles and lizards. As adults have no natural predators due to their size, the toradon's shell has now become segmented allowing to animal to more easily browse for food. Having such a large shell would only succeed in restricting the tortoise's mobility. The toradons are often described and portrayed as enormous eating machines, of which spend the majority of the lives, browsing and consuming huge amounts of rich vegetation. The toradons have established and travel in large herds similar to that of elephants, carelessly knocking over any objects in their path. Toratons are generally gentle giants, though they can be angered when their young are killed. 
while no animal is capable of bringing down an adult toratan, young toratans may find themselves inflicted and eventually suffocated by the lethal bite of a protective swampus mother, and are vulnerable to predation by predators. When traveling in herds, adult toratans will carelessly kick over whatever objects are blocking their paths, which potentially includes swampus nurseries. During the 100 million AD mass extinction, the skies are blotted out by clouds of ash, lowering temperatures, and much of the vegetation of the Bengal swamp was incinerated by white-hot ash. The cold-blooded toratans could not survive in these conditions, they stood motionless, their vitality seeping away in the cold.